Welcome to this Windows and Computer channel and this is an updated video on uh, talking about the future of Windows 10. Um, my video of yesterday that talked about what versions are coming up uh, sparked um, quite a lot of questions from users. So uh, we're going to answer that in uh, this video. So of course, like I said yesterday, we know that 19H2 is coming later this year, even though it's not being tested yet. So there's really not a lot we can talk, we can say. 20H1, which is being tested in the fast ring. If you look at my little quick reviews of the latest builds, when we have builds of Windows 10, you know what that is all about. Not a lot of new features yet, but you know, it's part of. Uh, it's part of the way that Microsoft, I think, is kind of uh, relaxing its output of new features and 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 trying to tweak Windows 10 in a different fashion. So some of the questions that came to mind for a lot of users, first of all, Edge. Um, a lot of people saying, okay, but in the future, when is Edge Chromium going to be re replacing the original Edge? Well, that is some time. Um, from what I've seen in a lot of the um, the posts online and the the, the different um, kind of you know tech journalists, there's a hint that that would happen before the end of the year. So before we end 2019, <coughs> at some point, sorry, <clears throat> at some point you will have a um, a new Edge Chromium that will be the Edge browser within Windows, because right now, of course, we've had the uh, we have the original Edge. And by the way, everybody can be an Edge Insider. If you go to the Microsoft Edge Insider.com webpage, you can download and install this on your computer. So if you want to test that out on Windows 10, 32, 64-bit versions available. There's a Mac OS version available, so even on Mac OS, you have that possibility. So why not check it out and test it out? So at some point, yep, this is going to be uh, replacing. This is the Edge Chromium that's going to be replacing everything. Um, you know, it's still incomplete, so of course that's that's what's happening here. The funniest part is, and that's what I was kind of saying, is that even though it's incomplete, it's actually <laughs> works actually better than the um, Edge browser when it was released in 2015 with Windows 10, and it was incomplete also. So this is actually a browser that works really, really well right now. So uh, by the end of the year, this will be replacing um, the original Edge, apparently. Another thing that a lot of people are like, you know, okay, why is Internet Explorer still bundled with Windows 10? I don't understand that. It's very simple. A lot of enterprise are still stuck using Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer was built and integrated in such a way with Windows that enterprise, when they were using different um, types of you know network infrastructure, got stuck using Internet Explorer to deal with it. And they can't get out unless they totally um, update all of that infrastructure. And the thing is, that's why Internet Explorer is still stuck within Windows 10. I mean, Internet Explorer should have died with Windows 10, honestly. There was a new browser called Edge, and um, you know things should have been so so different, but they couldn't, because even as of today, 2019, there's still a lot of businesses that actually need Internet Explorer, because that's the way, the only way it works within their infrastructure. So that's why it's there. That's why you still have Internet Explorer somewhere within the system. Now, another thing that a lot of people have been asking is, that, well, you know, when is Paint going to re be removed? A lot of people talk about Paint. Yeah, Paint is that thing that uh, has been with Windows, you know, since at least Windows 95, I believe. And if, if not Windows 3.1. I mean, Paint has been with Windows for as long as I can remember. And uh, it's, you know, the simple... Um, app that you can do little touches here and there to some of the you know the pictures and stuff thing is um, of course you guys knew that paint 3d was supposed to of course replace paint and paint 3d was that new paint and every Microsoft was pushing paint 3d 
Of course, uh, it didn't catch on, and a lot of people complained that, well, I kind of like paint. I don't want to use paint 3D. I mean, it's beautiful that you can do 3D stuff, and paint 3D does have some nice features, but people just went a little nuts on, I want to use the original paint, you know? So, um, after saying that they would deprecate and then eventually remove paint, well, it's not an option anymore. Uh, a couple of months back, Microsoft actually updated Paint with new features and um, kind of said, well, okay, we won't remove it. It's going to stay there. So you see here, this is on the May 2019 update. It's still there. And it doesn't give you that, because if you guys remember Paint, when you were actually starting Paint in the, I believe it's in the October 2018 update or before, uh, at some point there was a message that said, oh, by the way, this app is going to be removed soon. So better hurry. And I was like, huh, okay. Well, the thing is, um, this app is now staying. And you don't have that message anymore saying, hey, this app is going soon. So that's one of the things that Microsoft changed its mind. One of the interesting aspects, I would say, of the future of Windows, because a lot of you have been asking, is, is there something, you know, there's two focus right now. One is they are really intense in the ease of access, having all sorts of new features and making the features for people with disability, um, kind of having a better experience with Windows. And that's something that they should have done a long time ago because as a tech guy, I've seen a lot of people that had disabilities and noticed how it's kind of difficult to, for a lot of the, those people to actually use Windows correctly. Uh, so there's a lot of new features and they're tweaking a lot of the stuff the, for narrator, uh, you know, eye contrast modes, the different sizes and making it easier and, you know, better for like, you know, a cursor size or uh, mouse pointer size and display settings and trying to make things a little better. So I think there's one focus there that it seems to be one of the main aspects. and. Uh, even as of 20H1, which is next year, there's some improvements from Narrator and some improvements uh, coming up <coughs> that are interesting on their, uh, on that side. It's interesting because for 20H1, they're tweaking, major tweaks in what is the um, Your Phone app. Now here, this is the Your Phone app on the May 2019 update. The same phone app on the um, 20H1 version has way more options, including mirroring your phone screen in Windows and even being capable of interacting with your phone. So this is kind of interesting. That means you could unlock your phone from Windows. You could actually tweak, check an app, um, interact, write a text message. And actually, I've used that functionality here. I've received a text message once and my phone was near me, it was in the kitchen. And I just thought, hey, I think I can answer from my Windows PC, and I actually did. And it worked fantastically well. It's not that bad, actually, it's an interesting aspect. Now, of course, Android phones are favored because they are open operating systems where you can do a lot more. Where it doesn't work well is you know, on iPhones because it's a closed system and they can't really do and tap into all the resource. But it's kind of nice and you know I'm getting my notifications of calls and of, uh, of, of text messages here within the app within Windows. So it's kind of nice. I think there's a lot of tweaking going on there. For the rest, you know what? I think what is the major change and the major new uh, way of doing things with Microsoft is Microsoft now is focusing on having stable and more um, interesting and a better experience overall for Windows users. I think that's why they're kind of slowing down on the new features because they just understood one thing. You don't really care, users don't really care about new features, a lot of users, majority of users probably. Plus, why put tons of new new features but have a buggy experience? And I think that's 
what they've learned in 2018, seeing that the April and October 2018 update rollout was kind of complicated. They've decided, okay, let's relax. Less features, but let's make sure this thing works and is more stable. So I think that's going to be the general look of the future and feel of the future. On the downside, less new features. So, you know, I've, I've got a lot of insiders on the Insider Channel saying, yeah, these builds are kind of boring. Yeah, there's not a lot of stuff. It's like we're installing new builds and that's pretty much it. There's not a lot to talk about. But then again, that's maybe what we want for the majority of users. Um, not everybody wants to have tons of new features on Windows 10. Actually, the majority of people don't really care about this, honestly. So that's pretty much what we uh, what we learn here about uh, all of this on um, on Windows, and uh, hope that the experience gets better with time for sure. So um, this is going to be the interesting aspect of all of this. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and thank you for watching our videos.